I thought we would do a little tour of the house in the sense of what are we doing for storage. And just to give you some background, this is a 600 square foot house. It used to be an old nursery office. So I wouldn't say that 600 square feet is a tiny house. If it is, it's probably on the large size of the tiny house. I think tiny house is generally 400 square feet, they say on the, on typically on the large end. But regardless, it is a smaller house, smaller than some people are normally used to. So I just wanted to share some of those clever ideas for storage. And one way to think about it is that we actually thought about doing this as an open concept house briefly, but there are a lot of downsides to that. And thinking through the structure of the house to figure out how we can maximize storage space or countertop space or anything was really important. And that particularly came into play in the kitchen area. So we chose to keep this wall so that we could actually have a pantry. And that was really important because we wanted a fullish kitchen. And in order to be able to have pantry and um, counter space and a place to put all your uh, accoutrements and your extra utensils and things along those lines, we really wanted to have more drawer space. The other thing that we actually thought about when we were thinking about the design and the layout, and Sandra has said this expertly in some of our other videos, is that we used to have a door here and there was only countertop space here, which maybe made sense in a nursery office where you just have employees who come in for the day and they just need a small fridge and a place to like wash their food or wash their hands. But we really wanted to get more countertop space and therefore more cabinet space. And that's one of the things that we thought about. We closed off the door that was going into the bathroom at the time and we swung around and actually put the bathroom door right here, which made sense because when you get up from the bed, you don't wanna to have to stumble your way through the kitchen in order to get to the bathroom. You just wanna go directly to the bathroom. So that really made a lot of sense for us and you could see how much space that actually afforded us as far as cabinetry. And even these cabinets, which are quite thin, are still quite deep and you could actually fit quite a bit in here. The next thing is like thinking about what kind of cabinetry space you have. And then this one actually is, um, was complicated for Sander to figure out, but he figured it out. And this is a Lazy Susan, which probably most people have seen, but not everybody has in their own space. And this is a really, like I could fit my whole arm. Ah! No! <laughs> 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 This is actually entrance to an <laughs> underground pantry. Yeah, a different portal. We chose one that actually didn't have a metal pole. So sometimes you'll see a Lazy Susan with a metal pole. Yeah, you got like a big uh, pan, like a wok pan, or how do you call those things? Yeah, those woks. And you try to shove it in there, and then there's this metal post in the middle, and you yeah. can't really. We actually do have something like that in the common house, and it's annoying. And he mentions the wok pan, and we actually do have a big wok. But that actually gives us a lot of space. And you just have to be mindful like how you actually close this. You can't be um, you know, negligent and just like knock it because you could actually knock your oven. But that's what happens when you're dealing with a little less space. Um, obviously we don't have a dishwasher. So that's one thing that uh, we have to kind of work with. And actually one of the changes that we might make because Sandra had mentioned this, I bought a, um, a drying rack that actually fits the exact length of the sink, but Sandra had mentioned, um, you know, it's not easy. Like maybe we could just do one that's half the sink size because you want to be able to wash on one side and then have the drying rack there. But I have this actually in our cabinet. So that might be one thing that we actually switch out, but we fit that right under here in this, um, underneath the sink. So it doesn't really sit like on top of your counter space if you're looking for that. Um, other things that I think that were really uh, ingenious in kind of thinking about uh, space and design is that we do a lot of cooking. So this is something that we revealed in our overall kitchen tour and also just uh, the kitchen design uh, and philosophy when we were thinking about it that Sandra did is that you could actually pull this out and put your food. So when you move this and you're cutting your vegetables, you could put your food right here. Now, if somebody else might want this as a different kind of drawer, which totally makes sense, but because we have a tendency to cook a lot, we really wanted something for 
our food waste and like the food that we're actually using. So yeah, there's a waste bin behind here. So. Yes, so this is like a compost bin that you could pull out right here. And it just is like so um, convenient to actually like push your compost waste behind here and then actually pull this out and then take this out and then put it in a compost bin outside or in your freezer if you want in like a paper bag and things along those lines. So those are just like kind of clever ways to think about space and to hide things that may otherwise be maybe not nice to look at, whether it's your compost or your trash or your recycling bins. The other major thing that we have here, and actually Sonder had showed this in one of his tours, is that we actually have this banquette seating. And this is something I think like people know to do already, but, and it may be a little bit inconvenient because you have to like pull off all of the- <laughs> It's a lot of work to <laughs> um, get to- uh, Yeah, so these are things that it's you- It's for the Christmas decorations. Christmas decorations is a really good one, although I have the Christmas decorations elsewhere, but. Uh, which I'll show you shortly, but this is the uh, storage in the banquet, banquet seating and we have it on both sides. I think also like your winter blankets or if you have like your extra uh, grains and your rice or if you have, um, you know, we don't have a tremendous amount of space for canned goods. You could have some places to put your canned goods, but this is a great place for your canned goods and things like that. So um, extra food, your prepper, Prep herself could go to town in this <laughs> banquet seating. But Sonder built this in a way with like three quarter inch plywood and he routed this out so you could grab yeah, it. Yeah, so it's easily. really thick and heavy duty so you don't have any beams obstructing the open area down there. Yeah, exactly. Because we were talking about like you don't want this seat to like sink in and you don't want the beams because you want to be able to grab things out very easily. So this is about a foot wide and like really long, I mean probably like 70 inches or so long. So you could actually fit quite a bit of stuff in this banquette seating. And we knew pretty early on that we wanted to do banquette seating because again, we didn't have like a lot of space, but this banquette seating actually offers and affords like a lot of space. Like you could fit quite a lot of people around this place. And it's pretty easy just to kind of like toss the pillows back on and um, sit down again. So. Again, pretty easy. Um, the other thing that we did is, you know, you typically wouldn't use that much space up here, but we're displaying some really nice vessels and you don't have to keep those vessels empty. So if you have extra things that you wanna put up there, like maybe you have packets of sugar or packets of noodles or things like that, you could actually put those up into those vessels. So that's something for you to think about. We have like a little step stool right here that we could use and move around the house to like go and water the plants or grab things from upper shelves. One thing that's also worth mentioning is the table that we got actually has, what do you call these legs? That's a trestle table. So you, talking about space, like the worst thing is sitting behind one of these tables is, uh, you know, your legs just hitting the, the table legs. And also this table is really easy to move. Like we put it on these soft pads. You can easily spin this, turn this around and its dimensions are in a way uh, designed so that if you turn this 90 degrees, you get a whole different kind of layout yeah. really quickly. Like you can have maybe two seats over here and then a bench here with more space. If I wanna just, be, yeah, if I wanna be facing this way Yeah, or there's that just way. lots of configurations possible with this type of table. And that's, I think, another way to make the most out of the small space that's here. Yeah, and this is actually um, 54 inches. So when we were uh, when we were looking at this space, we were like, that's probably about as as long as we could go, you know, in a way so that we could still fit through this side or that side. Otherwise, you will have to actually, you know, put the table on this angle. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I think it works really well and we knew we wanted a trestle table because even though this is kind of more of a cottage farmhouse look, a lot of those cottage farmhouse tables have really big spindle legs and you would be knocking your knees on that. And so the trestle table actually made a lot of sense here for saving on space. Yeah, another thing you mentioned in the beginning was these walls and not having an open concept, but having a knockout in the wall actually gives you both uh, it, it's almost like both benefits. 
of yeah, having you, a wall for more space, but also feeling like it's an open concept because this kitchen feels a lot larger than it actually is just because there's a hole in the wall and two windows here. So Yeah, somebody had actually mentioned in the comments, I can't remember, I think they said it was like an Amish term where they, they borrow light from room, one room to the next. And I really like that concept. Something like that. I, I'm probably getting it. Um, a yeah. Little plus, off. it brings a lot more light into this room, which would have all otherwise be very dark. So yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. One more thing that I'll just feature is that we did um, built-in. So we did built-in uh, refrigerator and freezer. So that is one thing that I think actually saves like a tremendous amount of space. Also, doesn't look so cluttered because I think if you have lots of different styles of appliances, it can look really cluttered in a small space. So the fact that we have built-ins is very good. And then even we took advantage of the height and have another little place where we put like a lot of our um, baking trays and things up here. So just a really clever use of space. Is that a mosquito? It looked like a mosquito. Oh, no. <laughs> use this. There you go. Come on, Mr. Mosquito. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> this is up, not gonna end. We good. end up destroying this, this entire gonna, kitchen. This is not gonna end. Oh, he's got. He's in the spider web. Oh, no, shit. he got out. Oh man. <laughs> That's why it's good to have spiders. <laughs> yes, we You're love You're not our very spiders. good at this. No, I. Well, I don't want to squish him. Oh, there he goes. I got him. <sighs> Luckily he didn't eat any of us and he didn't leave a trail of blood. <laughs> this is actually for spiders, but I like our spiders and the spider almost had a blood meal. I'm sorry, Mr. Spider. It's a shame. Continuing on. <laughs> All right, so some of the other things for just being sensible with space. Um, a chair, you know, Chairs elevated and we actually have these really beautiful boxes. I actually brought these from my place in Brooklyn. There used to be a really, actually historically, there used to be a lot of uh, beautiful vintage places like on my street in Brooklyn. And so I'm just using these for like the matches now for our wood stove behind me. But I just think having some like really beautiful boxes and everything that you could fit like underneath the chair, so that's like empty space. It just seems really sensible, but also becomes a, a really nice design element. And we have the same here underneath the couch. So let me bring these out. We have these kind of old wooden vessels and we just have some of our extra linens and things. I think these were actually some of the um, blackout shades that we ended up not using. So I didn't want to get rid of them. I thought maybe we could actually use them if we ever make another um, space. But for right now, I just kept them here in case somebody wanted the blackout shades because... Yeah, you could put them up if you yeah, want. Yeah, exactly. And then, then we just fit that under our couch. It's actually hitting on the second one that I have here. So, so it's just, again, using like the space underneath the well, couch. Well, yeah, if you get a couch that's like higher off the ground, you have a lot more options there. Store stuff. Yeah. And then I have other things, like there's actually um, some old apple boxes right over here, but I'm using the apple boxes. This would be the same though. I think this is kind of a cheat because you could have a total dresser that has a bottom area. This one didn't have a bottom area. So I'm just kind of using these as like design elements that could also hold more books. So I feel like that's pretty sensible. And again, just having these like really beautiful vessels. So here's another one. Sandra had mentioned like the Christmas decorations, but I actually have a lot of our Christmas lights in here right now because we're approaching uh, Christmas time. And that's actually one of the things that we have to do is actually um, start hanging up Christmas lights. It's one of the things that I thought we like, we discussed that would be fun to do for the Meadow House. So, uh, and then I have other vessels again, just having vessels that look really pretty and using it as a place to kind of store things. You have a things. vessel in a vessel? I have a vessel and a vessel. This vessel was actually- You gotta store your vessels. So. <laughs> That's actually a, like a watering container that you could, we, I had that in the bedroom, but we don't actually have all these, um, all these places filled up yet because we're not actually fully utilizing the, the meadow house yet. Like both of us are kind of staying down here at different times and 
wondering like, oh, what, what are some of the changes that we could do? Or what do you feel like you still need to do within the house, which um, maybe we could discuss at a later time because there are like certain changes that we'd like to make. Uh, but yeah, so this is also another great idea. We really crafted this bed with Lee from Old Plain. So he was the one who actually built some of the furniture in here. Sonder built a lot of the cabinetry in the kitchen but we had Lee actually do some of the matching furniture here and he's a local designer. He's about 50 minutes away from us. And one of the things that I had in Brooklyn was this under the storage of the bed. And I just think that's just such a great use of space underneath a bed. Of course, if you have an elevated bed, like you have an elevated sofa, you could actually put like, you know, things underneath the bed, but it could get like really dusty and things like that. That's the downside of storing stuff under your couch. But this, because it's in a self-contained cabinet, actually will prevent it from getting dusty and really protect your linens or maybe your clothes a bit more. So I really like having this. We have it on both sides. And I think that is a really sensible use of space. The other thing that we did is we just tried to expand what we were doing from inside to outside. So the patios became a place where we could actually store some things. So oftentimes we store our shoes out here on the uh, shoe bench. <laughs> so one of the other things that we started to think about outside is actually storing things outside that might not need to be inside, but would be really good to have at close range. So for instance, I have like watering vessels out here as well. So I can water plants that are out on the patio or even in the garden, or I could use this as a vessel to fill up the bird watering container. Uh, so this is a bunch of our fat wood. So if we run out of fat wood on the inside, we could come out and grab the fat wood here. But it for does, the stove. For the stove, for the wood stove. So it doesn't need to be like in the house. We could actually have it right outside the house. The bucket bench always historically was used for storage of buckets and things like that. There's plenty more space that we could do on using the bucket bench on the outside. And we also built a shed off the side of the house. And I know not everybody could do this, but it was one of those things that we felt made sense that we could actually store our tools out here. And like right now we have our like ax <laughs> in the meadow house so that we could actually cut some of the wood for the wood stove. But eventually I think we could actually store that out here once we finish up the shed. But anyway, that's our video for today. See you later.